o'clock, but it takes me a minute to settle into my body. See the, what is it? See the something? Be the something. I can't remember what it is. Uh, all right, so, um, when Sunday and I, Sunday and I became very famous in 1965, and we were famous, yes, we were famous for about a minute and a half. And then it, when the minute and a half was over, we had no job, we had no money, and we owed the government $270,000. Yes, thank you all for saying. So, so Sun said, give me two years and we will be bigger than ever. And since I had no plan of my own, I thought, okay, fine, you take it. So, um, I put on a gown, so I put on a tux. We started at the bottom, we worked on the worst nightclubs you could possibly imagine. Strippers would want to play there, okay? I mean, old timey strippers, the little pasty things, you know, back in the 30s. So it was kind of rough, and we cooked in our hotel rooms, and it was pretty bleak. And also, we played these places, and the people hated us, you know? And we weren't really trying to do strange songs that would appeal to them, but they still hated us. So, are you interested at all? Yeah. All right, because, okay, all right, I'm gonna get to a place, but I'll just get to it. So anyway, um, so, in the first, at the first show, there was two shows a night, seven nights a week. On the first show, people were busy eating, so they just didn't pay too much attention to us at all. And in the second show, 12 o'clock, everyone was drunk. <laughs> all five people. <laughs> and um, they hated this. And so, I finally got bored, so I just started trying to make the band laugh. And then I started trying to make Sunny laugh, which was very easy. And, um, and that's how we came up with our monologue. On the Sunny and Cher show, if you ever saw it, that's how we came up with it. So, that's what I usually did in my long career. And, uh, but somehow, I just couldn't find the monologue. So instead, I've been telling people about the three days it took me to turn 40. <laughs> and people seem to like it. All right, so it's kind of weird, but all right. The night of the night before, like the night of the 19th, way, way close to midnight, I thought, oh my God, I've cheated. I've cheated at old age. I'm so hot, they're really cool, and I've had heartbreak, and I'm sitting on the top of a bank cat. Right? Sitting on the top of a bank cat, drinking a beer like a grown up, and um, I'm wearing a little this, and you know, I was like, hey, this is it. Shh, shh. And, uh, and, and then I look over, I'm sitting with Paulette, we're all sitting on the top of this bank cat, and uh, Vetus Gerolitis, I have no idea how he got there, but so I look over, when I do that, what do you think? Yeah. Was she crazy? Uh, so I look over and I see the, the most handsome man ever. His name was, I was later to find out, Robert Campoletti. So I'm looking at him and I'm thinking, oh my God. So I kind of, I grabbed Paulette's arm. I gave her a bruise actually. I grabbed her arm and I went, Polly, don't look now, but I've just seen the cutest guy I've ever seen. And she did. <laughs> so I hit her. And um, well, so that night he and I kind of spent our night time um, running around trying to, that thing that you do when you like somebody uh, when you're five. And so, um, so finally I just thought, the hell with it, I'm going home. So I go home and I wake up in the morning and I'm fully 40. And, uh, and I get a telephone call from the director of Witches of Eastwick who says, uh -uh. who says, I don't want you, Jack doesn't think you're sexy and you're too old. Yes, right. Good morning, 40. <laughs> so uh, tears start streaming down my face, and I, but I'm biting the inside of my cheek to keep from crying because I don't want this. We, be we became great friends, but I was real pissed at the time because at one point he said, I don't want Cher ruining my movie. Yeah, but he's really a sweet guy. It's just he was so terrified of me. And I said, you know, I've been nominated for an Academy Award for Silkwood, so you're not finding me under a wall. <laughs> So, um, so, so I was living in a 
hotel, I was living in my friend's hotel, and my kids, I'm on the phone, I'm crying, and the kids come in with a cake, and two bellmen, and I'm sobbing, and I see them, and I'm going, oh my god, that's so great, and thank you, love you, love you, thank you, thank you, I'm so happy, I'm so happy. And so, um, then they, we eat the cake, and they go. All right, so my friend, who's been really sweet to me, he's been letting me stay in his hotel forever, and I owe him $28,000, and I can't pay it. I didn't have the money, and I just kept saying, dude, we're friends. So, remember that. Um, remember when you went to jail? I was the only person who liked you afterwards. So, uh, it's true. Yeah, it's true. So, but he was a wonderful guy, and he owns to go 55, 54, and he went to jail, but then he got him. So, oh, I digress. All right, so anyway, for the longest time, um, David Letterman show, he'd been asking me to come on, and I kept saying no. And they said, well, will you come on? And I said, well, I will for $28,000. <laughs> and they said, we don't do that. And then I said, well, then neither do I. <laughs> so, about 15 minutes later, they called and they said, the producer called, he said, okay, we'll do it. And I said, oh, good. And then, uh, yeah. <laughs> So, what the producer said to me, just out of curiosity, why haven't you come on before? Why don't you want to come on? And I said, because I think Dave's very smart and he's very funny, but he can be really mean. And I, if he doesn't like someone, he's mean. So the guy goes, oh, okay, fine. So I went and I was kind of, if you ever saw it, I was like, just big old baggy shirt, little tights and no makeup ish kind of look and short raggedy hair. And so I was sitting there and we're talking and it's blah blah blah, you know, there's nothing, nothing. And then he looks up at me and he goes, so Cher, why haven't you ever come on the show before? And I go, he knows. The producer told him and now this is what's gonna happen. I'm gonna lie and then he's going to have like the upper hand for the whole, the whole interview or I'm gonna tell the truth and I don't know what's going to happen. Yes. So he said, so why haven't you come? And I said, well, because I, I thought... And then words came out of my mouth. I could actually see them in little words like that. I'm not kidding. And I was like, before they got out, I said, because I thought, um, well, because I thought you were an asshole. He carried that thing around with him for about a year, he told me that. And so, um, it was pretty much a famous bit. So, um, so that was then, when I was 40, and this is now, and I'm almost, I'm going to tell you one thing before you ever know how I'm older than dirt. Um, the other day, I did a five minute plank. Just saying. So, all right, so, but that was then, and this is now, and now I'm 71. And I, I just have one question. What's your granny doing tonight? 